The conflict in northeast Syria escalated on March 24th when Iran-backed militias carried out multiple rocket and drone attacks on coalition bases. The two attacks on American forces in Syria happened roughly 45 minutes apart. At 10.39 p.m. local time, the first attack targeted the Mission Support Center site Conoco, where the coalition forces were located. Around 11.23 p.m. local time, Green Village was attacked by three one-way drones in the second assault. Two of the drones were destroyed by Allied air defenses. One made it into the compound and damaged one structure. The attack led to the death of a U.S. contractor. Five American service members and another U.S. contractor sustained injuries. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said the retaliatory strikes were carried out at the direction of President Joe Biden and targeted facilities used by groups affiliated with Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why Avenger Shorad system failed to fully protect U.S. troops in Syria. Let's get into the details. Army General Eric Carrilla, who leads Central Command and oversees U.S. troops in the Middle East, has reported that Iranian-backed groups have attacked American troops approximately 78 times since the start of 2021. Apart from Syria, recent years have seen drone and rocket attacks against U.S. troops in Iraq, an area where Iran has significant influence. In response to the threat perception, the U.S. Department of Defense decided to deploy Avenger Short Range Air Defense Shored, system. The weapon system is meant to defend infantry against drones, cruise missiles, helicopters, and low-flying aircraft. The deployment of this defense system in Syria was initially reported in late February 2021. Avenger was originally developed for the United States Armed Forces and is currently used by the U.S. Army. It's also used by the U.S. Marine Corps. Avenger air defense system consists of multiple sensors and weapons, and the basic configuration consists of gyro-stabilized air defense turret mounted on a modified heavy Humvee. The sensors include forward-looking infrared receiver, FLIR, an iSafe laser rangefinder, and optical sight. Weapons include four or eight ready-to-fire FIM-92 Stinger missiles and one M3P machine gun built by FN Herstal. FIM-92 Stinger operates as an infrared homing surface-to-air missile, SAM. The missile is 5 feet or 1.52 meters long and 2.8 inches or 70 millimeters in diameter with 3.9 inches or 100 millimeter fins. The missile has an infrared homing and UV detector for guidance and a 3 kilogram or 6.6 .6 pound high explosive annular blast fragmentation warhead. The Stinger is launched by a small ejection motor that pushes at a safe distance from the operator. Then the main two-stage solid fuel sustainer propels it forward and accelerates it to a speed of Mach 2.54. It has a maximum range of 8 kilometers or 5 miles. The M3P machine gun is a variant of the Browning AN-M3 developed for aviation use during World War II. It's a 50 caliber machine gun with an electronic trigger that can be fired from both the remote control unit, RCU, located in the driver's cab, and from the hand station located in the Avenger turret. It has a 950 to 1,200 round per minute firing rate. Loads one box of 200 to 250 rounds at a time. Experts believe that the Avenger could offer ground forces some desperately needed defense against aerial attacks, such as the one encountered in this case. But as evident, it's not been able to neutralize the threat in this case. A report published by the New York Times said that a coalition air base primary air defense system was not fully operational when the attack occurred. One U.S. official told the outlet that the base's Avenger missile defense system might have had maintenance issues during the strike. 
It wasn't immediately clear what exactly was wrong with the system or if the attackers knew there was an issue. Brigadier General Patrick Ryder, the Pentagon's press secretary, told reporters that the air defense's radar was working, but refrained from providing any more information due to operational security. General Ryder said, We take a variety of measures to safeguard our people, but again, it's an inherently dangerous place. This is not the first time an American system failed. On September 14, 2019, facilities of Saudi Arabia's oil company, Aramco, located in the east of the country, came under attack. As per reports, the raid began around 4 a.m., and drones, as well as cruise missiles, were used in the attack. There were 18 drones and 7 missiles. The world's biggest oil refinery, near the city of Abqiq, and a refinery near Qurais, where Saudi's second-largest oil field is located, were targeted. Being facilities of very significant importance, they were protected by layered air defense. The outer layer was Patriot Pac-2 surface-to-air missile batteries that the U.S. sold to Saudi Arabia to intercept aircraft and missiles. The inner layer consisted of several short-range automatic gun systems that were designed for last-ditch defense. During the attack, the Patriot Air Defense failed to detect the incoming threats or was too late and the automatic gun systems fired sporadically, but the threats were not taken down. The attack disrupted shipments of 5.7 million barrels of oil daily, which is around 50% of Saudi Arabia's output. The U.S. military has the largest number of overseas bases, and many of them are located in places that are vulnerable to strike by drones. The strike brings into focus the kind of challenges U.S. bases around the world may have to deal with. Troops could be killed, and multi-million dollar aircraft can be rendered useless with small and basic primitive drones and rockets. It's uncertain whether Avenger would have detected the threat, even if it had been fully operational, since when drones and loitering weapons approach at low altitudes, they're challenging for radar systems to identify them. It's unlikely that the Pentagon will provide details regarding this, since it may reveal gaps that could be exploited by the enemies. Intercepting rockets and small drones is tricky, and it remains to be seen what steps the U.S. takes to improve the reliability of the system. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.